Puva is a treatment that gets deeper into the skin. It's usually given with a photosensitizing medication. It's called Zorolin. And the phototherapy, the light is applied, is UVA. So it goes deeper in the skin and causes, therefore, more sun damage in the skin, or can cause more sun damage. has a higher risk compared to narrowband UVB to develop other skin cancers such as squamous cell cancers or basal cell cancers. PUVA was the first light therapy that was established for skin lymphoma. The PUVA is given usually for lesions who are thicker such as plaques and won't respond so well to narrowband UVB. There have been large studies uh, published who had shown that it's really effective for skin lymphomas but given the risk of skin cancers and given that patients have to take a medication, it makes them sensitive to even the daily sunlight. So more and more centers just switch to other alternatives. And so UVA1 is a treatment that's also deeper in the skin. Patients don't need to take Zorolin. So UVA1 is also reaches the skin into deeper levels and it's also ideal for lesions um, that are thicker. It's traditionally given for psoriasis, but more and more centers uh, treat patients with UVA1, usually given on a twice or three times weekly schedule. UVB is the general UVB spectrum and it ranges from 260 or 270 to 320. It's broader than narrowband UVB and has not been as established as narrowband UVB, but it certainly can work effectively for patients who have very thin lesions or chest patches. So in summary, um, the different phototherapies photothera are based on thickness of the skin lesions, and are based on availability and based on preference and based on other risk factors. If patients had already skin cancer in the past, it's probably better to have a phototherapy that's not getting so deep into the skin and a superficial light therapy may work better. On your left, that's what a modern phototherapy unit looks like in a dermatologist's office. Um, and in some ways, it's kind of like an upright tanning bed. But the rays that are emitted from uh, the dermatologist phototherapy unit are different than tanning bed rays. I really want to discourage you from going to your local tanning bed to see if it can help your itch. Um, I think it's really important that the care of your itch and your cutaneous T cell lymphoma is managed by um, healthcare providers, nurses, and doctors, and nurse practitioners that have experience in managing um, your disease. But it has benefits. It can help not only the itch, but your cutaneous T cell lymphoma, and it treats most of your skin all at once. Perhaps, I guess, the scalp and the bottom of your feet. But the rest of your skin is bathed in this ultraviolet light, and it turns out that ultraviolet light can knock out a lot of the cells that are contributing to your T cell lymphoma, but also to itch. But there are disadvantages, and one disadvantage is the travel back and forth to the dermatologist's office, and many patients have to go two to three times a week, um, which becomes quite a hassle. And also, because it's ultraviolet light, as you might expect, um, it can increase your risk of skin cancers. And um, you may be familiar with two types of phototherapy. One is PUVA and the other is narrowband UVB phototherapy. The good news for narrowband UVB phototherapy is we have not seen an increased risk of skin cancers despite, use it, despite using it now for several decades. And then finally, there's the cost. Um, and for some patients, it could be costly to go back and forth phototherapy or light-based therapy. This is thought to work via two mechanisms. One, direct killing of the abnormal lymphocytes on the part of the ultraviolet, but then also a local immunosuppressive effect. So what that means is that you may have the presence of abnormal T cells in your skin. That prompts an immune response from the surrounding healthy immune cells that manifests with more redness, more itching, more flaking. And the ultraviolet light tends to really 
uh, mitigate that component of the whole picture. So while you might, might get less direct actual killing of the abnormal cells, you definitely reduce the um, healthy immune response that drives a lot of the symptoms. We administer phototherapy as either ultraviolet type B or ultraviolet type A, and it's something that can be combined with systemic therapies. So briefly, narrow band UVB, it's kind of like a medical grade tanning salon. There's just one specific wavelength of light, um, 11 nanometers that is administered, and that is the one that helps the most with reducing inflammation. Typically, patients are started three times a week, and you have to slowly increase the amount of time that you're in the box as tolerated so that we don't burn anybody. PUVA, this is UVA, so a different wavelength of light combined with something called sorolin, the silent P, hence the name PUVA. And sorolin is a photosensitizing agent. So basically, it is um, it works its way into the abnormal lymphocytes and makes them much more sensitive to killing by the ultraviolet type A wavelengths of light. This is something that's combined um, often with things like photophoresis, interferon, oral retinoids, etc. What about phototherapy? Phototherapy usually is the first line treatment for uh, older children. But it's not suitable, of course, to very young children. Four years, three years, they, are, they can't get into the cabinet and get uh, the, the, the phototherapy. And please note that we don't have any information about long-term safety um, in children, as we know in adults. Therefore, we give a course of phototherapy to children, but we avoid usually from maintenance treatment. We, you all know that once you get narrowband UV or PUVA, you reach a, a clearance, and then the doctor sometimes uh, offer you to start reducing the frequency to twice a week, once a week, once every two weeks. Usually, we don't offer it to pediatric patients, usually. Okay, now band UVB is regarded as very safe among children. We give it to also to children with psoriasis, so it's quite safe. And uh, recently, guidelines for phototherapy th therapy for mycosis fungoides accessory syndrome, a consensus statement of United States Cutanus Lymphoma Consortium was published. And it's written here that for pediatric patient, UVB and PUVA uh, is relatively safe, although it's written caution, okay. caution. But sometimes we do give PUVA. You know, PUVA is soralin plus UVA, you all know it. But usually we refrain from giving it to our kids because it's less safe than narrowband UVB and it's not comfortable for a child to wear the glass, to avoid from a sun exposure. It's very difficult for, for the child. So when do we offer PUVA? We offer only for patients who have thick plaque. Thanks God, it's very rare among uh, children. But we also offer it to folliculotropic MF, which as I showed you in our case series, it affects almost 40% of our cases of pediatric MF, which is very often diagnosed in our uh, young children. So we do offer them PUVA. Why PUVA and not Nerobin? Because as I showed you, the, in, the lymphocytes are deep around the hair follicle. So for the narrow band UVB, which is the more superficial irradiation, it's hard to get so deep. And PUVA usually gets deeper into the, into the skin. So that's why it's, it's more recommended to give PUVA to folliculotropic MF in adults as well as in pediatric uh, patients. And also sometimes we give PUVA to those rare cases who fail uh, to respond to narrowband UVB. In Israel and in Europe, we can offer an alternative, which usually it's not, I know, available in the States, it's PUVA bus, instead of giving the oral of the sorlin, we put the sorlin in a bath, and then the child gets inside, he baths himself for 20 minutes, then he washes himself, 
and then he exposed to the UV. By this, we avoid the systemic absorption of the solar lane, and we avoid all the side effects, including the necessity to avoid from sun exposure. So it's quite a, it's quite a good option for folliculotropic MF in children.